Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on my YouTube channel. My name is Beau Bernier Frank and I'm a surrealist painter based out of Pacific Grove here on the California coast. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about inspiration and how we can find it from various sources and how we can maximize that inspiration to use it to our advantage to create work that is both meaningful and fun to make. So I think inspiration means different things to different people. Um, I think there's this notion that a lot of artists that are succeeding or that constantly produce work are always inspired. Um, I know at least myself, uh, when I was growing up, I was actually pretty much inspired most of the time. You know, I could always go back to my studio and just keep drawing and I could draw for hours and hours and hours and sustain this very high level of productivity for really long durations. And I think as I got older, um, I wasn't able to keep that same level of intensity and I started to kind of lose my interest in art. And I think a big reason why was because I started to change who I was as a person to please others. And I think um, inspiration when you're young, because everything's so new and exciting, you're constantly wanting to go on adventures and to experiment and try new things. And I think as we get older, we start getting stuck in these repetitive emotions and we just don't have that craving to try and do something out of the ordinary. I, I used to be very inspired all the time and I could go back to my studio and just stay in there for hours on end and just produce work that was fun to make, that I really liked making. And I think once I hit puberty, meaning like 13, 14, 15, um, I started to kind of have this self-awareness of my surroundings that I wasn't doing things for myself only, I was starting to do things for others as well. And um, I think that was when I started to divide on the person I am and the person I wanted others to think of me as being. Um, so basically I stopped creating art for me and I started creating art for others. and. I think that really took <laughs> that took the heart out of my art. So I, I stopped drawing. I I got into this really big art block, and I just didn't feel like drawing. I didn't feel like painting. I didn't feel like doing anything. And I think from from being so full of emotion and so excited about things to just being so apathetic and careless and just disenchanted with life, um, I lost my passion for art. So for about three or four years, I stopped drawing. It didn't matter how many exciting things I was doing. Nothing seemed to taste sweet. Nothing seemed to taste exciting. I was just bored, bored all the time. And the idea of inspiration seemed like such a foreign concept to me just because I hadn't felt it in ages. And it wasn't until I started traveling again and getting outside that comfort zone of the same repetitive routines and the same people telling me the same things and always expecting the same kind of reaction from me every time we met. So when I was in Spain and I was traveling and every day was a new day and I had to constantly take my life into control and reap the consequences of either good actions or bad actions and being fully in control of that was this kind of spark to be able to start feeling all those emotions again, feeling those sensitivities and being able to direct it through art because that was the means that I used it to express myself. So going from being not inspired at all to being completely inspired really got me back into my sketchbooks and I started doing little uh, interesting like tattoo teacher designs, uh, travel sketches, uh, and also started writing and I started reading and I used to hate writing and I used to hate reading and all of a sudden it seemed like the most amazing thing in the world to be able to put down your thoughts on paper. Um, and so I got really inspired and then I came back to the States and I got depressed because it was just such a big culture shock. And once again I was faced with this dilemma of just not being able to find inspiration. I couldn't find it. It was, it, I couldn't wake up and have this crazy energy and this drive to just create work. Um, and I was constantly trying to find it, and I was desperate to be able to go back to that place where I could just create work, like this unlimited supply of inspiration, you know? 
So I thought that maybe the only way that I could get that inspiration was by going back to Spain, going back to traveling, and just having to go in this environment where every day is new and exciting. And for a long time, I thought that was the case. Like, that was the only place where I could be happy because coming home to my hometown and having to go back to the same conversations, the same jobs, the same people that I've known since I was little, that seemed like... It seemed like a trap. Um, and it's funny because now I'm in this new phase of my life where I'm producing work that really speaks to me. I'm inspired, but I'm not really inspired all that much. I think a lot of times the inspiration that I'm having, it doesn't come from this place deep within me. I think a part of it's there, but then another part of it is actually outside of my environment. And I didn't realize how much my environment really affected um, my levels of energy and my levels of uh, inspiration within me. And what I mean by that is that I used to think that, oh, because I'm an artist, I'm always inspired and wanting to create drawings and paintings. And I realized that that's not the case at all. Um, I think <laughs> to get in that mode where I go to the studio and I clock in my time card and I just draw or paint or whatever. And then after, you know, two, three hours, clock out, after three hours of high level productivity, um, to get to that point, it actually cost me a lot more than I realized because I don't have the willpower I had when I was younger. I don't have the energy I had when I was younger. And so I rely on outside sources. And I used to think that my environment was the only place that could affect me, like the place where I live, the people that I see, my job, uh, my family, things like that. I thought those were the only places where I could get inspired to create work. And I realized that thanks to technology and the internet and podcasts and books, you can connect to so many great um, philosophers. I'd say philosophers, but they're just really creative individuals, people that created something really interesting with their life, that pursued a passion, that created a business, that wrote a book, that um, made a movie, started a band, wrote beautiful music, people that do things with their life. And I was like, well, you know, in my hometown, I don't find too many people that are like me, people that are really pursuing their passions with this energy, like, like they're chasing their dreams like it's the last train out of town. Like, I don't meet too many people like that, so I've kind of just been on my own and just painting on my free time and drawing when I can and creating these videos uh, when I'm not working at the restaurant and when I'm not painting and when I'm not at the gym or when I'm not with friends. And I've been saying no to a lot of people to be able to pursue things like this that do take a lot of time, do take a lot of energy, but I do it because I'm able to share both my work and I'm also able to connect with other artists and able to meet local photographers and local painters and people around the world that are supporting my ideas and who I also want to support their ideas.